Hi, in this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to complete a trio sonata with figured bass given. This is taken from ABRSM Grade 8, 2021A, Question 1. If you are new to this channel, please subscribe so that you can get notification when I have new video uploaded. Now, let's get started. Step 1. Read the question carefully and underline important instructions. Write out the key, chords, and related key chart. Like this. Related key chart means the original key and the dominant, subdominant, relative minor, and their respective relative minors. It is convenient for us to deal with modulations. This trio sonata is for oboe 1 and oboe 2, plus a basso continuo. According to the key signature and the chord in the first bar, we can confirm this is in A major. Step 2. Analyze the theme and mark all the tentative imitation, repetition, or sequence. In bar 1, we can see the first two beats in oboe 1 are being repeated in oboe 2. Bar 3 and bar 4, there is a tentative sequence according to the figure bass and the melodic shape in the bass line. In bar 6 and 7, there is another clue for sequence as well. Now let's go to step 3. In step 3, we are to write out the extended Roman numerals. This will help us understand the relations of chord progressions. Let's start with bar 1. This is A major. Recognize the chord tone A, A, C sharp. So this is the tonic chord 1 in A major. Without numbers, that means root position. A long dash, that means the chord continues. So the G sharp here is a non-chord tone. If we put the A over here, it becomes a lower auxiliary. The fourth quaver here with the 6, that means the third of the chord is in the bass. So we can jot down the note head. So it becomes C sharp, E, G sharp. So according to A major, this will be a 3B. Next one is the F sharp. F sharp, A, A. So the G sharp here will be lower auxiliary. F sharp, according to A major, will be the 6th chord. So in between these two repeated F sharps, there will be a lower auxiliary. Towards the end of bar 1, here is the C sharp. And because of the 6, it shows that the 3rd in the bass. We can figure out the chord tones are A, C sharp, E, which is 1B. Second bar, the first chord is with thicker bass 6-5. Six, 6-5 five. Six, five is the first inversion of a 7th chord. So we jot down all the notes. It becomes B, D, F sharp, A. So B will be the root and it is the second degree of A major. So this would be a 2-7 B. On the second beat, we have a 4-3, which means this is a suspension. And these two notes belongs to one chord. And E is the root. So this would be the fifth note from A major. So it's a 5 chord. 4-3 means there will be a 4th degree on top of the bass and resolve to the 3rd. 
So it is very clear that we will have an A and G sharp. Since in oboe 2, there is already an A given, and then with a tie note, so the A should be continuous. So A resolve to G sharp. We can definitely put the note head here and to confirm the suspension. Next is the A and A. This is the root position in A major tonic chord. Next one will be F sharp, and we have done this before. That is the sixth chord, F sharp, A, C. The last quaver here is the C sharp, so we can make a decision. This is A, C sharp, E. So A, C sharp, E would be 1B. So we have finished, figure out the Roman numerals in the first line. Let's move on to bar three. In bar three, the first note is a D. So this is the fourth note or fourth degree from A major. This will be a four chord, D, F sharp, A. And so we have a G sharp on top. This is the lower auxiliary. The second quaver is a B root position with the 7. That means this is a 7 chord. So B is the second degree, so it should be a 2 7. Next one without numbers, that means root position. So E, G sharp, B will be a 5. After that will be a 1, but then this is a 7 chord. So we just put a 1 7, A, C sharp, E. And move forward will be a D. This D will be the same as the first D, will be a 4, but this time with the 7th degree. That means there will be a 4, 7. The last quaver, F sharp here, D, F sharp, A. So it will be a 4B. In bar 4, the first G sharp is the 7th note in A major. So it will be a 7-7 seven, seven with the figure 7 here. And the 7 chord is a diminished chord. So diminished 7 here. G sharp, B, D, F sharp. The third quaver here is um, root position with a 7. So it should be a 3-7. Next one, third in the bass. C sharp, E, G sharp. So it would be 3B. F sharp here is the root position. So it's the 6th degree in A major, 6, 7. And towards the end of this bar will be a 2, 7 and a 2B. In bar 5, this 7 to 6 with a little line here in between two notes means that this is a suspension. But since the bass has moved from root position to first inversion, let's look at it. The first one will be a 5. The seventh note will be the suspension. Originally should resolve to C sharp. The seventh note usually resolve to C sharp by step down. But then the second quaver goes to G sharp, which is the third of the chord. So it should be E, G sharp, B. And at this time, before the resolution, the chord goes to an E on top. So it becomes E, G sharp, B. So let's just put 5B here and resolve to 1, A, C sharp. And towards the end of bar 5, this is E, root position, so E, G sharp, B. Uh, all are written by the question. And so this is 5. A is A, C sharp, E, root position, 1. And this one is a third in the base, that means A, C sharp, E, a 1, B. So this is the end of second line, bar 5. Let's move on to bar 6. Look at bar 6. 
seven six with a dash in between. This means a suspension, and the chord will be in first inversion. So this will be a two B. So all the three quavers are the same. Belongs to two B. Then the fourth quaver is the two root position. Next one, remember seven six suspension. It is always in B position. So this means a C sharp E G sharp. So this will be a three B. All the way until the final C sharp here. Go back to the root position. Similarly, in bar seven, we have the seven six suspension, and here is four B. And go to the fourth quaver. It is the root position of four. Bar seven, the third and the fourth beat, go back to root position five chord. It is a seven, so five seven two one, and then five again, E G sharp B, and go to one. In bar eight, A C sharp E, we can see there are two non chord tones here, and this shape shows us that this is like an escape tone. And this is being used again in the end of bar eight, oboe two. So finally, when we come to the end in the cadential progression, we find a D sharp here. And take note of the bass line. B goes to E. Looks like it is a E major. We confirm the modulation with the leading note D sharp in E major and a five one cadence. So before this five one, we will have a PV chord. So this F sharp belongs to A major six seven, and it is the same as E major two seven. So here is the PV chord. So we have finished analyzing the whole piece with. Extended Roman numerals, and this is the end of part one. I will continue steps four to seven in the next video. Stay tuned, and see you soon. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe, like, and share if you find this video helpful.